These are special bits that are made specifically for ice. This one scares me more than any other tool. There are huge chunks of ice flying off the sculpture. You couldn't even tell there's a block of ice in here because it just looks like it's still water. That's the number one question I get is, uh, how do you make the ice clear? That's it, it's that simple. Today we are carving sculptures and creating works of art out of ice. Crystal clear ice. Every good ice sculpture starts with really good ice. And in this case, we're making crystal clear ice. That starts by making it yourself in one of these ice block machines. We use water that we put through a reverse osmosis system. But as you can see, we have pumps in them. What these do is they circulate the water. And as it circulates, it pushes all the air out. So you have no bubbles. If we were to shut these off, we would have white blocks. The tanks are a little bit of an illusion because when you look in it, it just looks like clear water. But if you stick your fingers in there, there's a big block of ice in there. Kleinbell is the manufacturer of these machines. They've got it down with science. These are designed in such a way that they do it slow enough so that they don't freeze too quickly, in which case they will crack. And how cold are these machines? The water as it's circulating is 32 degrees. They have a bay over here where they can make six of them. And each block takes around three days to freeze completely. So you can imagine you want to be making a lot of these all at once so you never fall behind. With Mark's operation, they can make around 16 blocks of ice every three days. After September, it just gets crazy busy and these machines are running all the time. So if you only have a few machines and you're buying the ice somewhere from out of town. The largest blocks they work with are 10 inches deep, but depending on the project, they may go for something a little smaller. And a lot of their sculptures are a lot bigger than the blocks themselves. So they'll actually compile a lot of these blocks together to make one big structure. The water on top, even though it's a little counterintuitive, actually keeps the ice at the right temperature. If we just let it go and didn't suck this water out or didn't have water flowing on top, the cold produced by the machine would create so much pressure on the block that it would just start to crack all over the place. Mm, um, that's why my ice cubes don't look like this in the freezer. <laughs> all I'm doing is vacuuming up the water. Uh -huh. Right. Is that it? That's it, yeah. They have a nice pulley system to get these blocks out. Each one's around 300 pounds. You don't want to be lifting that yourself. Have a nice grid overhead to lift the blocks out. Do it safely, do it smartly and just watch your toes. All the way up. That beautiful thing. All right. And then we'll go down. All right. Look at mm -hmm. that. You freeze these just in with the block of ice, right? Correct, there, yeah. yeah. You can see, if you look down in there, that it's got like a hook. So as it uh, freezes yeah. okay. with the block, it's really hooked in there. So then when we pull it out with that, it really, it's, it's hooked in there, so it's not gonna let go. Um, and then we use an ice pick to kind of scratch out. We'll pull this plastic bag down. Okay. And here we can turn this this way. We'll pull it down, and then I'll let you pull this away. Okay. So try to come in uh, perpendicular, like almost like a straight line, so that it'll slide right behind there, yep. Very nice. That's it. That and then we'll take this over to the bandsaw so that we can give us give us our, uh, ourselves a nice flat surface to work with. Awesome. Ice doesn't freeze in a perfect cube, mm -hmm. so they've got to cut it. So they wheel this huge block of ice over to the bandsaw that they have in the corner just to make sure it's a perfect cuboid once they start working on the ice. You'll use this crank to lower the saw down to the height that you want to cut it to. All right, and About then- About 10, right? Correct. That's good right there. So give it a push up now to lock it into place. There you go. That should be good. Okay. All right. And then we can let it cut. And then we saw. Yeah. Just turn it right on and go for it, right? Yeah. Now we just take this ice and we discard it. It just slides right off the top there. Nice. Oh, it's not heavy at all. Toss it. 
Yeah. Immediately after they cut the block of ice, they put it into their freezer so they can begin working on it. Even once the top is leveled off, you still can't carve it yet because it's too cold. It's kind of counterintuitive, but you need to put it in the freezer so that it can warm up. They call it tempering the ice. This freezer is super cold. When we were in there, it was averaging about 28, 29 degrees, but they like to keep it at 24 degrees. What tools do you have going on back here? I think people always know the chainsaw. The chainsaw is ubiquitous with ice carving. Uh, this is your typical chainsaw um, that you would even use for wood. Uh, this one here is designed, this bar is designed not only for wood, but for doing fine details, for doing sculpture work, whether it's wood or ice. Just little smaller, finer right. details. Like I noticed right. the, it's the got tip smaller is a lot. teeth. It's it does littler cuts. Uh, it's it's a lot of fun. I did a lot of this using the tip of this, um, but then you know when you start to do the outside parts, you're going to use the other chainsaw to to take off all the big stuff. A lot of the tools that Mark has, he's had for over 20 plus years that he purchased when he first started making ice sculptures. And they're pretty crude, rudimentary tools. They're like chisels, some <laughs> hammers. The normal chisels that you'll see, these are special chisels that are made for ice. You only use it on ice. And you want them only to touch ice or else then they're worthless. These are special bits that are made specifically for ice. This one scares me more than any other tool. So let me show you what it can do. Right down here. It'll cut through a 10 inch piece of ice. Five inches at a time, but it'll go right through it. And it like goes butter. through it like butter. I like this guy because he's nice and easy. And you round surfaces with him. Just kind of sanding it down, smoothing yeah. it down. This is to get into small areas around a face. It's got a nice round tip on it. Something you cannot do with a chisel. This guy's cool. It looks you, like a weapon. Yeah, this guy is a weapon. <laughs> yeah, you can do a lot of stuff with this. So, I use this a lot. Um, quick stuff. Uh, you know, whether you want to just cut hole or drill a hole or do something around it. I mean, it's really quick and easy. The traditional method for carving ice sculptures is all done by hand, but for a lot of their projects, they'll use a CNC router as well as CAD software to make 3D designs and then have the machine automate the whole process. From what I gathered, the CNC machine is best used for those rough sketches and then they'll smooth out the sculpture or it's good for those really, really fine details that would take the guys hours to complete and hours that they just don't have, especially around their busy season. The artwork that we do on the computer in the office gets converted into this tool path. This is just an eighth inch bit, comes right here and it barely touches the ice and so okay. then when I start my program over here, it'll carve Whoa. this picture. So you can see how it's in there and it's yeah. just going back and forth. So we use this from anything from corporate logos. We make our uh, liquor luges with this. We'll, um, wow. even, even the three-dimensional jobs that we end up cutting, like the Santa Claus, um, we'll start here and we'll kind of uh, add line work to it um, so that it gives us a little more of a template that we don't have to actually take paper, stick on the ice, and do it by hand. So we can literally do anything except for major three-dimensional detail work. This was actually laying down on this machine mm -hmm. and like the machine did all of that work. Mark had to teach himself how to use the program, how to use the computer, how to get the CNC machine to etch in what he wanted, and then he does all the fine detail, all the work that the CNC machine can't do by hand. And Mark might as well be a machine when it comes to using these tools. It was really fun watching him go to work and make it look so seamless.
have to be able to see the sculpture within the block of ice. It's just take off little by little until you get what you need and then you switch your tools to a little bit smaller, a little bit smaller, a little bit smaller to do the fine detail work. really surprised by how easy it was to work with all the tools. Those chisels were sharp, cut through the ice just like butter. I think it's a testament to Mark that he creates hundreds if not thousands of these sculptures every single year and he never gets tired of it. He still brings this passion and this love and this joy to the craft. What I liked hearing from Mark is that even though he's learned so much and he's done so much, he still wants to learn more and do more and try new tools and new techniques for making better and better designs. There's guys all over the world that do what I do and basically it's the same but everybody has their own way of doing stuff, and every time I see somebody doing stuff, I'm like, I love that. I'm a, you know, I, I just love it. I love seeing what other people do, and there's guys that just blow me away that are way better than I am. There's guys that are just crazy good, especially competitions. You should see what they do on those. Going into this, I had seen ice sculptures, but never really knew the process behind making them. There's competitions where you watch people do it really, really fast. I loved working with Mark and taking that slower approach, understanding how it was done, how these things are made, and then getting a chance to do it myself. He really cares about his creations and he really wants them to be the best, but he also cares about the business and how he grows his business and what tools he can employ to serve more clients. Yeah, and I'm definitely grateful that there are people like Mark that prove the fact that that you can make a business out of anything that you're passionate about. Now that you know how to carve ice, maybe you might be interested in learning how to carve something else. So check out this video where we teach you how to carve pumpkins. And if you want to make your own clear ice at home, check out this video where you can make your own clear ice in a small cooler in your freezer.